Supposed Bible contradiction. Where did Jesus go after his birth? Jerusalem or Egypt? Matthew records Jesus was taken to Egypt to escape from Herod the Great. However, Luke doesn't mention this trip and instead says Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Jerusalem for dedication and purification before returning to Nazareth. So do the accounts contradict? Only if we assume an argument from silence is valid. The supposed contradiction is based on an odd assumption that both Matthew and Luke are each claiming to include all the whereabouts of Jesus' life. In reality, both accounts are talking about different events, and neither says the other did not happen. Luke speaks about a Jewish ritual where firstborn males were taken to the temple to be consecrated before the Lord. This would have been a short trip and a customary ritual, something Matthew writing to Jews would not need to mention. Luke, writing to Gentiles, is giving the customary context Gentiles would not have known about. The objection is based on the assumption that Luke means verse 39 of the family returning to Nazareth immediately follows after verse 38, when Jesus was in the temple. However, Luke never claimed to write a complete and exhaustive account of everything that happened to Christ. And it is known he left several gaps in his Gospel and Acts, such as Jesus' appearances in Galilee, Paul's time in Arabia, and a four-year gap between Acts 12 and 13, among many other places. It is perfectly consistent with ancient biographies to leave out events and details of a particular person and focus only on certain aspects. I mean, Luke never says Jesus did not spend time in Egypt. Richard Burridge even says, Critics pointed out the lack of full treatment, childhood stories, psychological development, and so on in the Gospels. However, these aspects are also missing from other ancient biographies. Plutarch wrote several ancient biographies in parallel lives and leaves out details other ancient writers mention. Yet no one claims contradictions between these two, only that each writer chose to mention different details. So why would the accounts of Matthew and Luke be treated differently? If gaps were a necessary feature of ancient biographies, it can easily be argued Luke left a gap in chapter 2 between verse 38 and 39, which is a consistent feature in his writings. It is assumed through misreading scripture with western eyes that Mary and Joseph would have only gone to Bethlehem shortly just for the census and to have the child, then would have promptly left and returned home, only stopping by Jerusalem once on the way back. However, this is a western view of travel. Scholars Randolph Richards and Brandon O'Brien point out it is more likely Joseph and Mary would have remained in Bethlehem for two years, picking up carpentry work where it could be found. They note ancient people did not have the sense of constant rush like many modern Westerners do, and could remain in different regions for a while if people were welcoming and work was available. It is not like today where there is a large house with bills waiting for them in Nazareth. Most of the ancient poor would have had their possessions with them and could have set up just about anywhere. This is also indicated in Matthew, as it appears some time had passed before the wise men arrived. Thus it appears Joseph and Mary remained in Bethlehem for a while. Therefore, after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph took him to Jerusalem to be consecrated. Luke skips ahead at this point, leaving out that they returned to Bethlehem, where they remained until the wise men had left. Then they escaped to Egypt and remained there until Herod the Great had died, and then finally went back to settle in Nazareth. Matthew, who wished to show Jesus was the fulfillment of the Old Covenant, had an important interest in mentioning how Jesus came out of Egypt, whereas Luke was not focusing on that, so he could simply move ahead. Therefore, because different ancient biographers writing about the same person would at times mention different events, and it does not imply a contradiction, and if we're going to be fair, this should obviously apply to the Gospels as well. Thus, this supposed contradiction is nothing more than an argument from silence.